Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for Photolia, the stock photography community. In this video, we'll be taking a tour of the character palette so that we can make the most out of text. Let's jump into Photoshop and see what's what. So here I am in Photoshop and I've already got my starting image loaded. You can see that it's called Circus Poster Red Vintage. And of course, it comes from Photolia. More details up on the screen. Right, let's put in some text. I'm going to go and get my text tool and then click down where I want my text to be. And I'm going to type Photolia. Photolia. So there we go. We've got the text, but it's not really what I'm after. The font's not right. The color's not right. The spacing's not right. We need the character palette. So let's go up to Window and choose Character. We could also click on this icon here and that will do exactly the same thing. Now you may have already got it open on your side panel and that's fine. Just click it to open it. I'm going to click and just drag this out so as I can see it a bit clearer and let's get to work. Well, first of all, I need to reset this all. So I'm going to double click on my layer of text and then I'm going to come out to this fly out menu. Then all the way down to the bottom and it says reset character. And that's going to reset this whole box all down to its defaults. There we go. That's much better. That makes it easier for me to start from. First things first, I want to make this font bigger. And you can see that I can do that within this dialog box. And this is reflected up on the top as well. So there's two places we can do this and some other bits and bobs. For me though, I'm going to spend my time in the character palette throughout this tutorial. So what I need to do is to change the size. And now I can click on this arrow here and it will bring a list of available font sizes to me up to 48 maybe, then 72, and it's still not big enough. Next to each of the values in these dialog boxes, you'll see that it has an icon hovering over it will give us the name or some clue as to what that does. In this case, set the font size. And we'll also get this pointy finger with two arrows. Now this means it is what we call a scrubby slider. I can click down on the icon and then moving left will reduce the number in the dialog box. Moving right will increase the number in the dialog box. So in this case, that's quite helpful. And in fact, I want to come up to about 190 points. There we go. I can't move the text if I go into it, but if I come out, you'll see I get the move tool, even though I've still got the text tool selected. I can click and then just move the text where I need it to around about there. Now I need to change the font. So I can come up to the font name here and click on the downward facing arrow and I can come along and I can choose the font. Now in some software packages, as I hover over the name of the font, it would update the font dynamically. That's not available to us here in Photoshop. Hopefully one day it will be. So I just have to really try and guess using the word sample. Or I can come out of that. I can click in here and I can use the up and down arrows to scroll through the different fonts. Actually, I know the name of the font that I want, so I can start typing that. It's actually called Rosewood, R-O-S-E, and already it's coming up. So I just press enter now, and there's the typeface that I'm after. Again, I just need to move this just very slightly. There we go. And now I can click the tick and accept that. Now this is still dynamic text. It can be updated at any time. In fact, I need to update it. That black doesn't look right. So let's double click on the text layer and then click on the color swatch. I can choose a color from in here and you'll see it's updating for me. Or I can come onto the document and using this eyedropper tool, I can click on a color that I want my text to be. Let's click OK and then click the tick. And that's that done. Let's add some more text. So just about here, I want it to say images. Uh, then I want it to say video. And vector. That's a little bit too big. Let's double click. And resize. And again, I'm using the scrubby slider. 
but I do know that this wants to be about 60 points. So let's dial that in, 60 points, and press enter. I don't want it left justified, however. I want it center justified, so I am going to come up to this contextual menu here and click there to make it center justified, and then resize it. Now, while I was typing that out, let's click the tick. While I was typing that out, I had to keep pressing carriage return so that each word would be on its own line. That's not always something I want to do, especially if I've got a lot of text. Let's just move the character palette just up a little bit. And still in my text tool, I can make what's called a text box. So click down on any corner and then go down to the opposite corner and you make a marquee for the marching ants. Let go and we're all ready to go and put some text in. I can resize these much the same way as with the transform tool. Let's put some text in there. If we're not sure what text we're going to want in there, we can always put some placeholder text in there. There's websites that give you the lorem ipsum, which is kind of the standard placeholder text, but in later versions of Photoshop, it is available to us. So I can come up and I can go into type and choose paste lorem ipsum. And sure enough, it goes and puts that in. If I double click this and reduce the size of it, you'll notice that there was a lot more text there than was in the box. There we go. So it'll only display what's inside the text box. Let's bring that down a little bit. There is actually some text that I want. It's on the clipboard. I'm going to press Control or Command V just to paste that down. There we are. I also know how I want this to be as well. So let's do that while I'm here. I want it to be in Titania. So let's just highlight that. Titania. Enter and about 30 points, 30, there we go. I'd like this to be left justified, I think this time, and maybe have this a little bit bigger. Now you can see that I can start manipulating my text in the box as much as I like. There we go, good. I'm happy with that. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on. So I'm going to press Control or Command and then press the plus key just to go in a few times. And let's just center this up. And now we can take a look at what else we've got available to us in the character palette. So let's go and have a look at the tool tips for each, shall we? Set the leading. Well, the leading is the distance between two lines of text. So I can highlight two lines here and I can say make these a little bit bigger or smaller. I'm going to go for about 48 and let's go a bit more 72 but you'll notice it is a scrubby slider so I can change these on the fly as well I wanted these a little bit closer together or further apart I'm going to put this back to how it should be on auto next coming down from that we have this one here again a scrubby slider set the tracking for the selected characters so let's just highlight the word community and then I can scrubby slide to this and show you what's happening. So it's spreading the letters out in a kind of a concertina fashion. Let's put that one back to zero. This one set the kerning between two characters. So you notice here between the T and the Y, the Y seems to be a little bit of a distance away. Now this might not bother you, but to anybody that's into design, that will be sticking out like a sore thumb, I shouldn't imagine. So let's go in there and let's pull this down. And let's go minus 50. It's just going to tuck it in just a little bit. Maybe we could go a little bit more, 75. And that just tidies it up just a little bit. If I go back to zero, it'll look like it's the Grand Canyon between the two of them now. Again, a scrubby slider. I can bring this down as much as I like. There we go. Next one along, or down, here we go. It's vertical scale. Let's go and select this A here. And using the vertical scale, again, a scrubby slider, I'm going to bring this one up. You'll see it kind of stretches that out. Now, that may be the effect you're after, but just as an alternative, let me just point out that you could also make this font bigger as well. There's two ways of doing it. One stretches it, the other one keeps everything in proportion. 
I know which one I prefer, but of course it depends on what job you're doing. Let's keep that there. Next one along, horizontally scale. So let's do the community again and then then click and just drag it out as a scrubby slider and you can see it's stretching it rather than the concertina effect that we had before. I'm going to change that back to 100%. Now we have this one here, set the baseline shift. I'm going to come along and I'm going to find, I'm going to find an O somewhere. There we go, right in the middle of responsible. I'm going to select the O. And I'm going to change the baseline shift. I'm going to make it a minus figure and it's going to take my O below the baseline, should I wish, all the way down. Or I can take it up. Now this is quite helpful if you want to do some funky things with your font. Maybe now you'd like to make the font smaller. Bring it back down a little bit. There we go. Do all kinds of things. Let's move to this strip below the dialog boxes now. I'm going to highlight all the text. And this first one, faux bold. So if bold isn't available to you, which it isn't with this particular font, we can ask Photoshop to do its best to make it bold for us. Just by clicking that makes it or tries to make it bold. Let's click off that one. Same's true here, faux italic. It will try and make it italic the best it can. Where long? All caps. This has saved me on many occasions. So I've typed out a load of stuff and then somebody said, actually, could we have that all in capitals? Yes, you can. Just a click of the button. Sometimes, however, that doesn't quite fit the bill because the capital letters want to be a little bit bigger, really. And that's where this button comes in. So if I click on that one, you'll see now that it's all in caps, except the T there for tens has remained big. Of course, the A was already big at the beginning, but the T has bigger than the rest of it. Works out quite nicely. Let's take that one off. Now let's come down here to this O, the of, and I can demonstrate these ones. This one's superscript, pops it up like that, and subscript. Now, of course, I could have used that earlier on for my responsible O, but I had more control, so it's a choice. Next, underline, so we can make sure that international underline international let's just make sure it's just the word underline international and then finally we need to put a line through now well, that's done that but I'm not going to leave it like that because of course Photodia is international has an international team so we don't want that um, scored through at all there we go we're all done let's zoom back out again command or control minus and let's replace that somewhere just about there and I'm going to click the tick okay one last thing let's add some more text and I'm going to put first for stock and you'll notice I purposely put a capital F and a capital S we'll see why in just a second I'm going to select all the text and then I'm going to choose my font which quick glance at my notes reminds me that it's Bickham the I there it is and there we have this nice swirly font. I'm going to use the scrubby slider just to bring this up a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to zoom in. Right, there we go. Now you'll notice now that we have this row underneath the row we were just looking at available to us. These first two will change the way that different letters react with each other. Let me turn them on and off. Not sure the first one will do much for this font but the second one certainly will you can see it certainly on the s and the t of first it changes the way they connect we've also got a different swirl on the end of k there as well actually the o and the r changes as well there as well good next along we have this one here discretionary ligatures again i don't think there's many in this font it's there if we need it and now we come along to my favorite the swash so let me do the F as I put a swash on that oh look at that and then I'm going to do the S and this one gets really special nice and swirly I need to move this across now there we go 
So we've very simply just changed this font up to make it look a lot more fancy. Finally, if I do the S and the T here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this and you'd hope then that it would go up. But unfortunately, in this particular font, that isn't available, nor are the fractions. So if you put a one slash two, it will automatically convert it to a half. It's not available in this font, nor are the ordinals. But we already know we can do that. Let's make the font smaller. Let's change the baseline. Oop. There we go. Now it's too near to the one. That's okay. We know how to change that too with our kerning. So there we go. Easily done. Let's close that. Let's press Control or Command Zero to fit it all back and click the tick. Let's move that one a little bit. So we get the Move tool and move it a little bit more into the middle. So there we go. We've had a look at the character palette. Don't forget to check out Photolia and come and visit me at tipsquirrel.com where you'll find all kinds of Photoshop goodies. For now, though, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.